Last week on the Lost Gardens of Chateau de Rosière, we continued work on the transformation of an abandoned water tank into a fantastic greenhouse. We showed you the daunting task we faced in breaking through the concrete-lined walls to open doors. This week, we will bring you up to date with some of the other developments with its construction, including the laying of a concrete floor and building of foundation walls for the greenhouse. Hervé got uh, joined up by Fabrice, uh, another stonemason, who gave him a big hand to, to build the wall of the greenhouse. And now we've uh, dug another trench to install some cold frames that will be at the bottom of the greenhouse. And uh, so the, the concrete is still fresh. So we are going to put the cornerstone uh, there it's quite uh, big, so I'll uh, lift it with the digger. Cold frames have been used for centuries to extend the growing period of plants. They are essentially simplified miniature greenhouses, consisting of a frame to contain the plants and a glass top to allow light in. They are often used to plant out seedlings in early spring, to get a head start on the growing season and avoid potential frost damage. They were particularly popular in the 19th century, and I've been digging around in Mark's extensive gardening library to show you some examples. I came across this book from 1885 with an illustration of a Belgian greenhouse that is designed in a very similar way to ours. You can build cold frames anywhere, but the advantage of a design like these is that they benefit from the warmth and shelter of the main greenhouse through the shared wall. This Belgian greenhouse is heated, but even with our unheated design, the greenhouse will be relatively warm. Another advantage of this design is that it's an efficient use of space and reuses an existing wall as one side of the frame. Cold frames don't have to be this complicated or large and can be made with repurposed materials that many of us have lying around. They can also exist in very small spaces, such as patios. As many of you know, Mark is not only a passionate gardener, but also has a postgraduate degree in agricultural engineering and was once a university professor. He has also lived and worked in some of the world's most extreme climates, such as the Arctic Circle and the tropical forests of the Caribbean. He's planning to do a live Q&A in the coming weeks, specifically on cold frames and how you can build and use one yourself pretty much anywhere in the world. He will do a short talk and then spend time answering your questions. Don't hesitate to write your questions as comments on this video and make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure that you don't miss this opportunity to join him live. If you're watching this video after the live Q&A has happened, you can find the recording of it under the live Q&A playlist on our channel homepage. Now let's head back to Mark and the kids who are trying to get the digger started in order to put the cornerstone of the cold frame walls in place. Is that the oil, darling? Yeah. What's wrong with your digger? No, it's uh, just the, the diesel not uh, coming into here. I need to change this pipe. Amelia. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you run down to the orchard and get one then.
What are you up to um, early this morning? Uh, we are going to pour the slab in, um, in my pottery studio. <laughs> and Your concrete slab? Uh, yes. And why are you calling it a pottery studio? Because uh, you tried to preempt it as a, as a You promised studio. me it as a pottery studio, but it quickly became a plant shed. No, it was always the plan to put a uh, lean to greenhouse. So I'm putting the last uh, electric pipes and the uh, water pipes under the, the slab so that uh, as many as possible are uh, not visible. And to basically make... this is your last chance, isn't it? Yes. Because Just once they pour it, there will be a, a, a massive concrete slab. Yeah. And uh, so I might uh, still need to put some apparent ones. It's not the end of the world because it's... Uh, some visible ones, uh, yeah. Yeah, some uh, visible mm. ones. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, so I put as many as I can uh, under the, the slab. And what are these electrical cables for then? Uh, for putting sockets, uh, well, sockets in uh, various places in the shed because the, I'm planning to do a bit of uh, hydroponics or aquaponics and I'll need to put some uh, possibly horticultural lighting and mm. things like that so I, I want just to keep the, the, options, uh, the options open. And this big pipe here, that's water I presume? The which one? The big... Uh... Uh, yeah, that's uh, a drainage because uh, same I want to be able to put a sink uh, which is always useful when you need to water plants and, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah so I've put uh, I've installed a little drainage that goes uh, it will um, it will just uh, go in the inside the greenhouse uh, I'll put a little drain and uh, to, it will keep the moisture up inside the greenhouse <laughs> It's been a bit hard to keep track of the project as we go around because um, Margot's been filming a bit, Adonis filmed a bit, I've been filming a bit, Mark filmed a bit. Um, so I'll just I, show you. I didn't film much for the. No, <laughs> what a surprise. Um, there's the main uh, house, which is the original cistern, and then they've built two more walls uh, to make the glass house and the cold frames. And one change that Mark says wasn't filmed yet is the colour of the metal. I chose this colour because it reminds me of a lot of uh, glass houses of the late 19th, early 20th century. Uh, and I think it ah. makes it more uh, in keeping with the, the style and the atmosphere I want to achieve. I'm not looking for a, a, a medieval glass house. No. You see, they didn't exist at the time. Uh, but the earlier glass houses would have been uh, usually similar colors, uh, either light green or light blue. Uh, and I mean in France, because in the UK they were uh, actually mostly white. Really, it is in keeping, because one of the big things about here has always been that it's a, um, a chateau in an estate of multiple eras, isn't it, Where, that left their mark. And actually, the late 19th century was the time of 
big change in conversion, wasn't it? Yeah, they did the um, be well. The late 19th century is a bit uh, like the 1970s before the time. Actually, <laughs> they did a lot of big work because it was the industrial revolution. They had a lot of new techniques, new materials. They were starting to have machines that made the work easier. Uh, and but they didn't always have the taste uh, that went with it. Oh, you snob! <laughs> uh, I mean the and the it was actually the same in the 60s, 70s. Uh, there were uh, it was the revolution of concrete. So they decided to put concrete everywhere. They had uh, uh, big uh, tiles that were easy to wash. Uh, that were uh, um, they had the uh, formica and all the uh, all those uh, marvelous uh, novelties <laughs> that made life so much easier. And so here the idea is to take well, what we think uh, was the best of each time period yeah. in the estate. I'd love to know what she thinks. The objective is here. Because <laughs> all she's doing is moving stones around. You're funny. Thank you. This is hopefully going to revolutionise the time that we spend in the garden and make it way more efficient. Because at the moment, um, everything has to go back and forth between multiple buildings. And also, um, we don't have centralised water. We don't have a centralised place to store stuff and to grow seedlings and things and it just all takes so much time and when you've got a 130 acre estate it's a bit um bit of a challenge and so in order to be able to um see um see through some of our biggest plans we need a control center so i can kind of see mark in here with a bank of cctv cameras showing all the bits of the estate uh that would be a bit extreme, but it feels a bit like that. And I can see him getting happier by the day as it comes on. Hello, babies. Are they, darling? Where's the glass going to be for um, the greenhouse? Um, okay. In this window? Um, Above you, I think, isn't it? It's going to be a, a ceiling of glass. On this, on that door, on that door, there's going to have some doors. Oh, really? Yes. And are you going to help Papa to grow his plants in here? Yes. Good. Unfortunately, we seem to have lost the rest of the footage that shows the pouring of the concrete slab and the setting of the concrete slab. But rest assured, it all went smoothly and we now have a beautiful floor inside the cistern. What are you doing, Margot? I'm painting some um, bits of ironwork for the greenhouse. Nice. Yeah. What Which is my, to... It's my way of procrastinating yeah. stuff that what I What are you supposed to, to be doing? <laughs> I'm supposed to be writing my personal statement for grad school applications. <laughs> um, but this felt, this felt better. <laughs> it's out in the sun for a start, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And Mark, which bits are these? What are these for? Which bits are these for? These are uh, called frames. Mm. for starting the seedlings in spring mm. and um, so the last thing I need to do after that is put some glass then I'm going to have to put some uh, well to remove the leftover cement from uh, from the, the walls 
put the well sieve the top soil and put it back in there and uh, install Mommy. the taps uh, install the electricity in my potting shed and uh, put the uh, fridge with beer in it <laughs> and uh, that's it once Mark had put the sieved soil into the cold frame, we decided to plant some very special iris bulbs in it for their first year. You can see the full story of these irises and our visit to one of the largest iris nurseries in the world over on Patreon, which starts at just two euros a month and has a free trial available. Earth it and it's a bit fiddly. <laughs> <laughs> 